Hi everyone. So this is my home studio. I'm here working at home as you will be doing very shortly if you haven't already started. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to use your under co underglaze colors so that you can glaze your box. I have my box here. Um, I already started glazing, underglazing one side and then I'm gonna work for a demonstration for you on the other. Um, a couple things about underglazes. The reason why you're gonna underglaze your boxes is uh, you are going to underglaze them and then when you bring them in uh, before May 1st, uh, you are going to leave them with me. I will handle glazing them. So underglazes are safe. Remember, underglazes have been made by a manufacturer and they've been deemed safe so that children can use them. So they're pretty safe to have at home. It's not a big deal. But if you were to take home like a big vat of glaze, then that's dealing with a lot more toxic material than you would want at your house. So underglazers are very safe to use in the home environment. So you have a couple different underglazes. Um, you have the black and the white. And then I let you guys take, I think, three or four colors home with you. And I'm gonna talk about how you can expand your color palette by just taking those modest three or four colors, adding black and white to work on saturation and intensity, and mixing the colors so that you can kind of play around with trying to get neutral colors and other colors, you know, yellow and blue make green, right? So we're gonna be working on that a little bit today. So let me show you guys my studio space. Um, I have, you don't have a turntable, but you know, you don't really need a turntable, but you do have a bat, hopefully. Um, I have two containers of water, one for my washing and one clean thing of water. Remember, whenever you're under glazing, you wanna use your brushes and wash each brush and then rinse each brush in a clean container of water. So this is my clean water and this is gonna be my dirty water. And then down here, I have my palette. You probably don't have something this fancy at home. If you do, yay on you. But if you don't, don't worry. All you need to use is something like this, just a piece of plastic. Um, just as a, This is just a plastic lid to a Tupperware container. Try to use a plastic lid that you're not going to use for storing food later on. Even though underglazes are safe, you know, I would hate for you to, um, you know, not clean it well enough and end up with underglaze in your food. So you can use a palette of any kind, just a little piece of plastic will do. Yogurt container tops are great um, for, for this. So, so what I did is I took a little bit from each container of color and I poured it into one of these little reservoirs. And then you can put the lid back onto your container so that you don't forget and they don't dry out on you. Water can be added to them to water them down. So if you've got a really thick pasty um, underglaze color, you can add a little bit of water. Same thing, if it's too watery, you can leave the lid off and let it evaporate out, but it takes a little while. So um, no worries. Okay, so let's talk about color a little bit. So I have my black and white here. And if I want to take a color like yellow, and I want to make a lighter color of yellow, more pastel color, I would take some white and clean my brush. And I would take some yellow to mix in with the white so that you can kind of see the difference between those two yellows. This is a more intense yellow. And then this one, this is very saturated yellow, I should say. And then this one is much more pastel yellow. So you can play around with color blending that way by just adding white to a color to get a lighter version of that color. You can also play around with intensity, which is like the value of the color. So I'm gonna take, for this one, I'm gonna take my red. And I'm gonna take just a little bit, a very small amount, even that seems too much, very small amount of black. And I'm gonna mix it into the red. And do you see how that red turns into like a darker, deeper, burgundy kind of color here? And you can see this changes the intensity or value of the color. Is I can take two different colors and I'm gonna change palettes here, like blue, and I'm gonna add another color to it. So I'm gonna take this blue, put a little bit there, and then I'm gonna take a little bit more of that red and mix it here. 
and you can see that it is a purple, but when you mix colors, especially underglaze colors, you're not gonna end up with a super vibrant purple. It's kind of a more neutral purple. So this is, um, you know, you can get a lot of interesting colors that way with um, just mixing two colors together. Try to only mix two or three colors together, but never over mix all the colors because you end up kind of muddying the waters a little bit and you end up not with the color you intended and you had to have these weird kind of shades. So let's start with our box, okay? So I've already started kind of working on this side and I'll just walk you through what I kind of did here. Um, with this side, what I started with is the background. You wanna paint the background so that when you're painting and you're using your brush kind of loosely to get the amount of color on there, you know, you, you got some on the jellyfish or you got some on your background back here. So that's fine because what's gonna happen is once I paint the background, I get that background color smooth in the way I want it, then I can do all the detail work uh, like this clam down here and these rocks down here. So you wanna work from the background to the foreground, okay? And that'll help you kind of keep yourself organized. So I'm gonna mix some custom colors for this background. I'm gonna start with um, putting just a little bit of just straight up blue, for, straight from the bottle into the background. So I'm just going to paint it on. And remember your clay body, this is gonna be high fired eventually, okay? so. The clay body itself right now looks very kind of pinkish. It's kind of anemic little, um, an anemic meaning it doesn't have a lot of like life to it. It's kind of boring. <laughs> so it's very, um, very kind of pinky in color. It's not very exciting. In the high fire kiln, as we fire it, the clay body itself darkens and it turns that rich tan brown that stoneware clay body has. So I just kind of faded that out just a little bit to lighten it. And I'm gonna do some color blending here. Um, I have that really beautiful purple that I made. So I'm gonna pick up that purple. And this really isn't enough. I'm gonna need a little bit more. But I'm gonna dab that purple in in spots because this is the ocean, right? So we have that dappled look. I'm gonna make a little bit more. I'm gonna pick up some red. And I'm gonna pick up some blue. And my mom is actually helping me today. She is my camera woman. <laughs> so, so if the camera work isn't very good and you guys wanna write bad reviews for me on uh, rateyourprofessor.com, just blame my mom, okay? <laughs> I'm just gonna say it's all her fault. Okay, so I'm just gonna put in a little bit more. Ooh, that's really, do you see how dark that is? That's okay because I was talking about the, cl the clay body. So the toasty brown color that is the background color, which is this, um, that's gonna eat up a little bit of the intensity of these colors in the kiln. So remember, underglaze colors do not come out super intense in the high fire unless you put on layers and layers and layers of them. So here I'm, I'm using more watered down layers. And then I'm using water as a vehicle, this is called a vehicle, because it makes things move, as a vehicle to spread the underglaze around a little bit. And now you can see it looks really kind of dark and stormy, I like this. Can you guys see what I'm doing here? I'm just kind of mixing a gradient. I'm not touching that green up there because I'm gonna probably save that I'm going to put a little bit more intense blue down here and you guys see that gradient of green all the way to this middle color to blue. Okay, so I got this like kind of desaturated, um, kind of neutral-ish blue green here and I'm going to start that up at the top because as the water would filter through the ocean, you know, you would get these like lighter colors and even for me this is a little dark. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna go back through after I get this first top coat in and lighten it up a little bit. 
you do have to build the colors up that again that clay color background is really going to eat up a lot of the surface that you put on so don't be super light about your application but don't try to plaster it on if I just tried to make this solid blue that would be so boring and not really live up to the naturalistic way I'm trying to do this work fast forwarding I'm just blending more blue over top of the purple so that it's not as intense as it was and now you'll see me add a little bit of green right over that blue. I'm going to take that green blue color and also include the lid. Don't forget to think about how your image wraps around the box. And if I really work, if I let this kind of set up and then really work another color on top you'll build up more and more but if I work wet like this where I'm just adding more and more water um, you can see the clay body underneath and that's going to definitely turn a toasty brown with these like hints of green and blue it's going to be much more muted very subtle so I'm going to let this dry and then I'll do another application of that again and I'll probably do a third application um, because I, I do want it to be a little bit more intense in color so I just used up all that stuff I had blended up. So now I have my background kind of uh, colored. I think the purple's a little garish. So I'm gonna work a little water into those purple parts to smooth it out just a little bit more. Now I'm going to work on the bottom. So I have all these like craggy rocks with details. If you use like a texture, um, remember you can put underglaze into the textures and then wipe away. Um, you can still do that even though I did the background. It's very easy to touch up underglazes. So I have some, some chocolate brown. And I can use straight up chocolate brown or I can take a little white and add to the chocolate brown to kind of taupe it out a little bit, make it a little more taupey. And then if I want, I'm gonna use this kind of as my base, and then I'm gonna add a little yellow and a little red as I go, and you'll see me working on that here. So here with these rocks, I'm just gonna work this taupe brown. Remember, I'm already gonna be have a brown surface but I want a darker brown. So I'm gonna really get a lot of water and I'm gonna stipple. I'm stippling the underglaze into those craggy surfaces so I can get that deep inner shadow inside that texture. Here I'm working extra fast, working that brown in. Remember to use water to make sure that you're getting into every little crack and crevice of your heavily textured areas. And don't be afraid to use a larger brush to really mop on some of the color tones. Then just take a sponge and you can then wipe away, revealing the clay body, which will be a toasty brown. So now I'm gonna take my chocolate brown and I'm gonna add a little yellow. I'm just going to move this up to a little side here. Actually, I'm going to add a lot of yellow. More like I'm adding chocolate brown to yellow instead of the other way around. And you end up with this, interestingly enough, kind of a green tone. It's kind of like this mossy yellow green color. And I'm going to paint that onto the surface here. Kind of on the high points. I'll take a little bit more yellow to make it brighter. Little tips of those rocks. 
And can you see how this kind of gives this two-toned effect as if like light is kind of filtering down through the surface? And here to help with that two-tone effect, I'm going to add a little bit of black right underneath the rocks, just as if it was found in nature. The light would be coming through the ocean and then hitting the tops of the rocks, and then I need a sense of shadow, so I'm using black to kind of make this shadow effect. Really getting it into any cracks and crevices. Pay attention to your three-dimensional design. If you have parts that are kind of protruding out right underneath those parts, that would be a great place to add a little bit of shadow. Be careful with black. You might want to mix it with a little bit of brown or even a little bit of red to tone it down a little bit so that it doesn't act as like a, a sinkhole for your eye as you're, you look at your project. So I'm going to start painting these really bright colors. So um, whenever I do a bright color, I don't want it to be so bright that I'm like, oof, that's too much. So I'm going to take a little gray. So I just made up a little gray. And I'm working with this idea of, um, of intensity. So I'm taking this gray color and I'm going to paint it on these. I don't know what these are called. <laughs> what are these called? Trumpets. Trumpets? <laughs> yeah. Little, um, little organisms, pipe, pipe organs, pipe organs or something like that. Um, little organisms, fans live in there. I'm also going to add a little bit of black right on the inside there. And I'm being kind of sloppy about it because I'm going to wipe away. But you can see that kind of gray tone there. And I'm going to just wipe away. And now I'm going to add like a bright red, kind of a reddish purple on the top of these so that the red's going to be over the black, making it a little bit less intense. So it's going to be really intense up here where it's just pure red. And then as I go down over the black, remember underglazes are kind of semi, semi opaque. You can kind of see through them a little bit. So when you layer colors one on top of the other, the color underneath shows through just slightly. So this adds a little bit more dimension. So I'm going to take a little black, I'm going to put it into the lines and into, these are those big fans. That's my garage door opening. My son is probably thinking, are you kidding me? You're still doing this video? And you guys are probably thinking, are you kidding me? You're still doing this video? So I'm going to do a little bit more. <laughs> and I'm also going to kind of put some black in these I don't know what these are. Rocks or polyps? Maybe I was making polyps. Sea grapes. Sea grapes. Oh, yeah. And notice I'm, I'm just taking a little bit of underglaze at a time. 
I'm trying not to use too much. This was a lot compared to what I've been working with. So I'm going to paint that on here. straight brown and then I'm going to kind of change the tone to be like more of a purpley color because I'm going to then kind of take off a little bit of the brown. Brown and purple are actually related to each other on the color wheel and kind of a red purple. And a little bit of red purple. And I'm gonna go over this guy because I need I want that to dry with a little bit more yellow right on that lip. And I'm just gonna really put it on. I'm actually gonna use one of my smaller brushes. I sent you guys home with a couple brushes. I know it's not a lot. And I'm realistically I'm only using uh, four brushes in my demo so that it doesn't seem like I have some kind of like advantage that you guys don't have at home. I just do all this stuff at home, which is gonna be awesome. And those, those are gonna be really nice and bright. It's a different color tone than this greenish color that we put there. Now it's more towards yellow. And now I wanna kind of play around with this. I have this purple, red, yellow here, and then I want it to kind of change up here. So what I'm going to use is that green yellow I've been working on. And I'm just going to kind of touch touch that the high points. Can you guys see the side angle where I'm just touching the high points of those? And now you can kind of see, now this looks different than, than yeah. this part. Yep. So playing around with different color palettes. Um, that is, yeah. I don't know, forever. Um, so um, 35 minutes. 35 minutes. So I'm going to sign off and say goodbye to you guys. I could probably do this forever. Uh, and you guys will be watching a really long demo. Sorry for it going really long. But um, keep in mind... You want to layer up the colors. Don't be afraid to blend colors. You can play around with saturation by adding white so you get more pastel colors, a pastel yellow or a pastel green or a pastel, well, kind of pastel red is pink, but you get the idea. <laughs> or you can play around with the intensity or value of the color by adding black so you can get more of a deeper blue and a deeper, um, well, the brown is really deep as it is, but kind of a deeper yellow, the yellow will turn kind of brownish, you know. Um, you can also mix two colors together. And even if you're mixing them, you're it's always going to give you a more neutral color. Just that's the nature of underglazes. Um, and that will give you a lot of variety that you can play around with for your, uh, your boxes. Cleanup. So here's the big thing about cleanup. These are non-toxic. So you can just wash these in your sink. That's totally fine. Um, you don't want to leave things out though. Uh, you want to make sure that you take this and you put the lid on it so that you can come back to this later because you're going to need the rest of this underglaze for your um, vessel assignment. And then any of this stuff, do you see all this wet underglaze? I could put this inside a Ziploc bag or a plastic bag. Or I could leave it out and let it dry and then just add water to it. It takes a little while and it takes a little work to get them workable again. But underglazes, when they dry out, they don't go bad. You can just add water, reconstitute them, and they work great. Um, I hope you guys are having fun at home. I know it's a challenge. If you guys need anything, you know, just send me a, a message. I will respond. I hope you guys are well. Bye.